do it. Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and welcome to Ask MKBHD number 23. And it's also 12 of 12 for this year. We've done one every month, January to December. And uh, I actually kind of have enjoyed this series a lot so far, so I think if you're down, we'll probably continue it for 2018. So I asked you guys what you wanted to know on Twitter again, and a lot of you guys had some great questions. I selected some of the best of those, so uh, these are those. Do you think Tesla will run out of money before they release the Roadster? Uh, that's, that's a, I don't know how people think that. I actually hear a surprising amount of uh, auto uh, and industry people who tend to think Tesla is a bubble almost. They think it's gonna rise and disappear and electric is just a fad and they don't have to worry about it. And I think the fact that people have been in the industry for that long and still think that way is borderline troubling. So uh, no, I don't think Tesla's gonna run out of money before they actually make the Roadster. I think they'll be in a great spot by 2020. Apple just admitted it's been secretly throttling performance of old iPhones. Thoughts? Okay, so this was a really interesting uh, little, what would you call it? controversy. Basically, Apple has never really been super transparent about it, but they've said that in order to protect uh, old batteries and old phones, so if it knows your phone has an old battery, so you have, let's say you have an iPhone 6. Basically, Apple's pushing software updates to your phone to eventually slow that down. It's reducing the clock speed from like 1400 megahertz all the way down to 600 megahertz because it knows that older batteries have a harder time keeping up with the high voltages it needs to keep those high clock speeds going. So technically it makes sense that they're protecting your user experience by slowing down your CPU, requiring less voltage and making sure your battery lasts longer. But at the same time, now all of the headlines are, hey, Apple is actually pushing a software update to older iPhones to make it slow down. That's not a good look. I feel like they could have been a little more upfront and transparent about that before it had to be discovered with a Geekbench benchmark. Oh, and also how convenient that there are no removable batteries in iPhones. If you actually get into an iPhone and replace the battery by opening it up and replacing it, the clock speed of the CPU will go back to normal because it sees a new battery. Bottom line, I just think it's kind of a funny controversy. We all kind of suspected this to begin with and now it's just confirmed true. I just wouldn't be surprised if Apple's not the only one here. John wants to know, how has the iMac Pro changed your workflow? Honestly, the number one thing that comes to mind is it makes me appreciate it way more coming from a slower machine. I've tried to edit 8K, 8 to 1 raw videos on MacBook Pros in the past, and of course my Mac Pro, which was choking and dying in the end of its years. So the number one difference, the, the faster render speed and the faster real-time playback without dropping any frames in high quality is the number one thing that's made me super happy about it. And the other thing is actually in Final Cut Pro 10.4, the new version, uh, there's a lot of color controls that have replaced all of the plugins I was using to mess with color before in Final Cut. And they're all fast and optimized and I can drag as many onto the timeline as I want and apply them in real time and play. And there's no lag between actually hitting the play button and it's starting to play. So I think I've been more confident to just go in and mess with color. Um, but yeah, no, just, the thing is just blazing fast. I know most of the work in Final Cut Pro for that rendering is being done by the GPUs, by the Vega GPUs, but I'm also pretty excited to see how well that 18 core does when it gets here in, I think February is my ship date. All right, so in Superstaff's video, you said your favorite smartphone of 2017 was the Pixel 2 XL. I did say that. But in your smartphone awards, you said that the Note 8 was the MVP. Why? Explain yourself, Marquez. Okay, so the simple answer is, I am biased, and I know I'm biased. I actually value different things than different people, so I acknowledge that I think the Galaxy Note 8 is the best overall, most well-rounded, most complete smartphone that came out in 2017. Best screen objectively on any phone. Uh, has a great camera, has great performance. They did a pretty great job with the skin. They get better every year. They have the stylus, they have the battery. It's got a lot going for it. It kept the headphone jack. But the Pixel 2 has stock Android, which I personally like more. It's not objectively better, I just like it and the Pixel 2 does have an objectively incredible camera. Now, it might have a much worse screen and no headphone jack and a bunch of other things that aren't quite up to par, including the design, but I don't really mind that as much, so I'm willing to sacrifice that to keep that amazing camera. I know that I value the camera more than a lot of other people who might just want an overall complete package. So that's why I pick the Pixel 2 with stock Android and a great camera as my daily driver and can still acknowledge that the Galaxy Note 8 is an overall great phone. It's because I'm biased. See how that works? Will 2018 be the year of tri cameras on smartphones? I guess triple cameras on smartphones? No. I really don't think so. In fact, it'll probably start going back to one camera on the back just because it's actually possible to do almost everything that we wanted to do with dual cameras with one, as we saw from this one. What would the perfect phone setup be for you? Software and hard there. 
part, mm, what? What would the perfect phone setup be for you, software and hardware, and would you rather have a big sensor size or dual camera? So the whole concept of a perfect smartphone, I've been over that in the past. I actually have made more than one video about the whole idea. I might be tempted to make another one in 2018 with like these updated specs and reference phones we have, but generally there is no perfect phone. I did tweet recently though that I would like to have this rough combination of Pixel 2, Note 8, and Razer phone. I might not be the only one there. And as far as big sensor or dual camera, I'm gonna go with big sensor because you can do a lot of the stuff, like I said, that you could usually do with a dual camera with one great camera. Item you most look forward to in 2018. Okay, I, I have two, two good answers for this. One is that red smartphone. Uh, a lot of people were asking about it near the end of the year for the smartphone awards. Whatever happened to that red uh, hydrogen one, that smartphone we all pre-ordered or that I pre-ordered, uh, 2018 is it's, it's expected to come out pretty early and we expect to see more of that probably right after CES. And then two, uh, accent, accent buttons on phones. I've really grown to like this colored power button on the side of the Pixel 2 and it's only the black and white one. Even though it's not the best color in the world, the, uh, the uh, Star Wars OnePlus 5T that does this with that red button, I really like that too. There's another Huawei phone that does this. I hope 2018 is the year of the accented power buttons or some accent color buttons. I think that's an awesome look. Am I the only one? Is that a weird thing to hope for? Why wasn't LG V30 considered in the smartphone awards? Oh, it was considered. Trust me, it was considered. It was on the desk right in front of me. I actually said in my video about it earlier in the year, the V30 is, is easily the most underrated phone of the year because it's a very complete phone also across the board. It's just a little bit worse in pretty much every category than the ones that were actually winning awards. It has a great display, but not the best display. It has a great design, but not the best design. It has a great camera, especially the video camera, but not the best camera. It has a big battery, not the best battery life, but it has a big battery. It kept the headphone jack. It has dual cameras. There's a lot of great things going for it, but it's just so underrated because it's just not soaring above the rest in one particular category. What's your favorite winter animal? I'm um, gonna go with uh, Bobcat. What is a winter animal? Is it a bobcat or a lynx? Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, they also are out in the snow. They like I have no <laughs> kills. I mean, they're they're both mountain cats. I you know they're probably happy in the winter. I think. What was the point? The single event, if you had to choose one where you felt like your career as a YouTuber took off. Like a couple months ago, more than a year ago actually, there was a little stretch where basically Vic Gundotra, who was uh, a head at Google for a while, uh, he posted something on Google Plus saying, this kid is the best tech reviewer on the planet right now. And that was awesome because I'd known Vic for a while. We'd been sharing each other's stuff, talking, and it was just a cool thing for him to say. But that quote, obviously because he was at Google for a while, just kind of blew up. There was articles about it, Forbes article, CNN article, this, that, everyone was writing about it, quoting him, just because it was a popular story to talk about. I went on a couple different TV news networks, like a couple different night news shows, just because of that quote talking about it, they came and they invited me on, so how old are you, son? And you're doing what on the internet? How is that, that's crazy, he said you're the best online. So I kind of went through those thinking like, yeah, no, he did say that, and that's really nice of him, but this was just like one post and, and everyone sort of latched onto it. And that's like the strongest where I've ever felt like, wow, is this, this is, this is crazy. Now you never overlook the amount of work you put into something because it wouldn't be where it is. And if I were to go back and redo it, I probably wouldn't change anything. Um, but I think one thing that stands out just to answer your question is most recently, in fact, up to like right now, as I'm recording this, Google is running a commercial for the Pixel 2 and they're quoting a, a couple different like reviews of the Pixel 2 in their commercial. It's on. It's playing during like football games and NBA games. In that ad spot, they use quotes from NewYorkTimes.com, Wired.com, Esquire.com, and me, my, my review video. That is honestly mostly thanks to you guys. The fact that I can make these videos, and I'm saying a lot of the same stuff that other people are saying in their reviews, but the fact that you guys take the advice seriously, I know is a big responsibility for me. And that's why I put all the time and the research and the effort into making as good of a video as possible. And that's awesome that also the companies that are being talked about appreciate that. Five out of the six companies that won awards in that smartphone awards video we just posted have reached out and contacted me and asked to get their trophies. That would be Essential, Google, Razer, 
Samsung, and HTC. I don't expect Apple to reach out for their trophy, but if they want one, they can have it. But bottom line, thank you to everyone for watching. I'll let you guys breathe a little bit for the holiday season, but then we'll be right back at it afterwards with the tech stuff. CES is around the corner. All these phones we're ready for for 2018 are already starting to rumor up. So uh, I'll talk to you guys then. Thanks again for watching. Peace. Also, in case you guys are wondering about this, this is this is part of the Chris Paul bandwagon. I'm not, I mean, I'm just saying it now. I'm allowed to follow my favorite player. So just so you know, I'm not on the Rockets bandwagon. I'm on the Chris Paul bandwagon.